Hello, welcome to the Perfect Genetics Challenge, Generation 2, Episode 18. We're still in Vice City. Don is staying in the base camp. He's brought four young adults from Mountain Lake to live in Vice City. Here's an extremely high level map view of the entire world. That tiny island at the top right has got one house on it. That's it and it's empty, nothing inside, just a shell. I'll draw some circles around where everybody is because I've moved all of the young adults into their own homes now. That circle that you can see on the top right there is where Don is in the base camp. There's another six houses circled now in the top middle of the map. The six Sims living in those houses are Mary, Wynne Holden, Petunia, Bart and Martin, plus Carolyn Price. That tiny circle joining onto the circle around the six houses, that's around Patricia Flowers' house. And that next circle just to the right of Patricia's place is around the houses where Max and Paul are living. As you can see, I have tried to get them all living close together. I had Barbara in one of those six houses that I mentioned earlier, but she jumped up and ran off and moved into a more developed area of the city. She's living in a high-rise building now. She's on the left, about halfway down the world. She's got a star as well as a circle. There are lots of empty houses in this world. I'm obviously not going to be able to put sims in each one or the game will simply stop working. And a lot of them are just empty shells, but a lot of them do have basic furnishing. And of course, the lots are very tiny, so I can't do much by adding extra of my usual preferred venues. I have found places for a few venues though, and I'll show you where they are. I haven't looked into all of the high-rise buildings so far, the skyscrapers, but almost all of the ones I have looked into are just empty shells. I'd love to delete a few and add some venues that I want but of course all of the lots are so tiny that at this point I can't see any way of adding any more venues than I've added. I'm hoping to find a spot for a coffee house and a performance park but I haven't managed to find that yet. I'm trying to retain the overall look of the world because that's why I've got it because it looks so different. There are several rabbit holes in the world but they're buried in basements. So we've got a couple of hospitals and I've bulldozed one of the hospitals to place the Elixir store. So we've got at least one consignment store in the town and I have bulldozed a large 64 by 64 lot that I was going to put Plum Bob Pictures back lot into, but I ended up putting a roller coaster build. It was the first roller coaster I ever built and I've almost never used it so I thought it could go in here. And I bulldozed another lot and placed a little wedding venue that I made a few, you know, re relatively recently, just a simple little shed really, with all done up inside for weddings. Another lot that I bulldozed was right next to the roller coaster, and I put port a party mini warehouse in there, and I bulldozed another lot down near the port, and I placed Bugs Tavern. And I found another lot that I didn't bulldoze, but I decided to turn it into a junkyard and I added some junkyard spawners. There it is there, the junkyard. I'll have to add some piles of junk. They're in Vidy Bug. I have got them in there now, but you can't see them because I videoed this before I put them in there. That's called Phil's Place. And not far from the junkyard, there is a graveyard. It's right in the middle of all of the buildings and it's got several tombstones there but everything that I looked at has just got remains in it. I couldn't see any sims buried in that graveyard at this point. This world was never finished so it's got a lot of shells in it and the tall buildings are some lots that are like 64 tiles in one direction and less than 20 tiles in the other direction and there's roads and other lots surrounding them closely so it makes it impossible to find you know to even bulldoze something and add an existing venue of any description 
I don't really want to put things in this green space, but I might have to, to get my coffee house in, for example. I'll just do a quick look around the world from the different angle. The world is unpopulated, of course, because, well, it hasn't been finished by the maker, and I don't know if they wanted to put the sims in there or not, but there's none in there, which suits me. I like to find worlds with no sims in, because I want to move my own sims into it. The game always does eventually manage to add two or three of its own extra sims in to each world, though I usually just ignore them. From the short time I have been in this world, I find that my sims tend to go down to the beach to fish. And there is Mary. She's gone to fish at the beach and she's caught something. Just behind her and a little bit further on, we'll get to it in a few seconds, you'll see the roller coaster that I built and placed in the world. It was the first roller coaster I ever tried to make. There it is. And I hardly ever use it. It's fairly simple. I built it in Midnight Hollow, and now I've got it on the beach, and next to it is Porta Party Mini Warehouse. We're going to have a party in there shortly, because I thought the best way to get the Sims all together in one spot would be to have a party. That's, you can see the six houses there in the middle, um, that's where they are mostly all living, just around that area. Might zoom down there and have a closer look at them in a second or two. I don't think I'll go over the whole of this world. That's the area where I put Varg's Tavern, just down near the airport. The houses and the, most of the other buildings are so tiny that there's less than 20 um, tile width on most of the lots and it makes it impossible to put a junkyard from out of the library into it because they're bigger than that in one dimension. So that is the six houses. They've got a little canal going around them so you can see where they live. And then we'll get the party started. But first I'll just try to show you each of the houses. I think there's nine of them live in, so there'll be nine houses. There's six in this little group. And then at the end of the street and around the corner, there is the house that Patricia lives in. And then a little bit further along, there are two small houses where Max and Paul are living. So that square house at the very end there, next to Bart's house, just across the street from Bart's house, Bart's got the car underneath his house, that square house is where Patricia lives. And then across the street to her left, that's the two little houses where Max and Paul are living. So hopefully you've got an idea of the layout of the city and you see where most of the family are living. Of course Barbara was initially placed into Wynne Holden's house, that's the little pink house next door to Mary, Barbara's Mary's imaginary friend made real. But of course Barbara is evil and it looks like she decided she didn't want to live close to her family members so she took off and moved across the water to live in an apartment in a tall building. And here she is, Barbara at home, preparing her breakfast. The problem with all of these tiny houses is the rooms are so small, it's next to impossible for me to record any Ooh, video inside. So we'll have to do it mostly outside. Now Max was enjoying his first day in his own new home on a new world. And he thought he'd go out and do a little bit of exploring. And he found a roller coaster. He'd never seen one of them before. And he went in upstairs to one of the rooms on the main building and he found a pool table and he thought he might practice a few trick shots which he'd never tried before. While he was practicing his chosen shot and having no luck whatsoever, he was getting somewhat frustrated when he got a wonderful idea. He decided he was going to throw a party and obviously it would have to be a pool party and he wished for that pool party and I thought I've looked at some of the pools from up above and I don't think you'd fit 10 sims on 
the size of a lot that we've got for swimming pools and the one lot that was really big and suitable to hold all sorts of things was the lot I bulldozed. It had a pool in it and I put the roller coaster on there instead. So I decided that we wouldn't have a pool party and I cancelled his wish but I thought a party was a pretty good idea and I had a look at all the parties that were available at the, the moment in the porta party mini warehouse and the only one that I thought was possibly appropriate was the costume party. So he invited all of his family members and a couple of acquaintances to a costume party to start at one o'clock the next afternoon at the Porta Party Mini Warehouse, which was just next door to the roller coaster. So he gave up on his game of pool, went home. And as he was leaving the roller coaster, he saw a group of savvy seller pedestals that attracted his attention, and he thought of buying something. But in the end, he just left them there, but he thought they would look pretty good. Did consider it quite seriously, but then he just went home. It was getting late. Did a little bit of exercise. It looks like he was doing a strength workout and he got the bodybuilder reward which means that he's never going to get fatigued whenever he does a strength workout from now on and I suspect he's also going to bulk up his muscles just like Gary has done. And here is a very quick look at the house. As you can see, it's very basic. That's it. You've seen upstairs and downstairs. I've added a basement to a couple of the houses, but not to Max's house. Those two houses on the front are Max and Paul's house. They're both the same, except I've given Paul a basement. And there is City Hall. The City Hall rabbit hole is buried in the basement. There's Max going in. He had to receive some sort of a prize for good citizenship. He won that before he left Mountain Lake, but he has been sent to City Hall here in Vice City to collect it. And there's Petunia going up there for some reason. I don't know what. And this is the morning of the party. As soon as Max reappears, we'll be heading over to the Porter Party Mini Warehouse to start the party. When I sent Martin and Bart here to live, I had forgotten to wait for them to do their graduation. And I've just noticed they're getting around in their graduation outfits. So they've obviously had their graduation, but we weren't called to go to it because they're living in different houses now. Petunia wasn't in there for long. She's out. There's people going in and out all the time. Now, Max took a really long time to get his award. And I just waited. And then I was rushing over to the warehouse because he did get out in time for the party to start and I had set up for it already. But I must admit I wasn't prepared for what happened. It was a surprise to me. Lots of other Sims walked up and down those steps going in and out of City Hall. But eventually Max came out and he headed straight for the Porter Party Mini Warehouse. His guests were arriving and because it was a costume party, I noticed them spinning into their costumes in the car park. I see the blonde Wynne Holden is there and the Carolyn Prices with the long black pigtails. They've both arrived and they're the two extras that I have added to the game. The warehouse is right on the beach and the roller coaster lot is beside it on the right. Max really wanted to have a pool party, but I couldn't think of a good pool for them to go to, so I told him he had to have a costume party and cancelled his wish for a pool party. And here we are at the warehouse. I put an extra buffet table there and recolored it red. I thought that it would go with the decor and the party shall begin. I'd forgotten there was a tiny pool inside this venue, so all of his guests turned up in their costumes and as soon as they got upstairs in the venue, they changed straight into their swimmer and jumped in the pool. So it looks like Max got his pool party but he didn't get the benefit of the extra lifetime happiness points for having his wish granted. The main reason that I have this party is I want all of the sims that I've placed in the world to get to know each other and the only way I know to do that is to get them all together at some point and get them interacting with each other and I thought having a party would probably do that 
uh, achieve that end and also we would probably have some fun watching what they get up to but we're not going to see much because they're just going to be swimming around in the pool and having breath holding competitions but we'll watch that for a little while and we'll see if everybody jumps in the pool I didn't see Win Holden getting in there I don't think but after a bit I'll get them out and I'll have Max DJing and playing some music and Sims will start eating but it wasn't quite the party I'd hoped for I think they got to know each other a little bit better there. As long as I know, I get them all into their, each of their relationship panels that they've got each of the sims that I want them to know are known to them. Eventually, as more sims started jumping into the pool, I began to worry about somebody drowning. Most of them were enjoying breath-holding competitions, sitting on the floor of the pool. Can recognize a few of my sims in there. There's just so many heads bobbing around. Not everybody's in there yet. I can see the two alien brothers, Martin and Max, and Max has got the green plum bob because he's the active sim. It's his party. There's Barbara stuck in the middle. And I've seen Patricia, and I think Don's in there too. That's Patricia with the purplish swimmers on. Petunia's there as well. Bart's sitting on the floor having a breath holding competition where he's bobbed up. And Mary, yes, Mary's there. I think I saw a proprietor in there at one point. I think most of them are in there now, but probably not all of them. Can't see Wynne Holden. She's got that blonde hair. She was at the party, but I don't think she's come upstairs. Finally, I persuaded Max to get out of the pool and go and eat something. I was hoping this would encourage some of his guests to get out of the pool and come and eat some of the food he'd provided. But they just ignored him and the thought of eating was too far from their minds. They were just having way too much fun holding their breath in the pool. So Max ate alone. But he was still in his swimmer so there was a danger he might go back into the pool at some point. New thought bubbles started popping up in the pool. Awesome party, lots of those thoughts, but there was somebody drowning. Oh my goodness, I've got to go and hurry up and try to stop a catastrophe. The only thing I could do was to type in the cheat code window reset sim and I just reset one of the sims names that I knew. I couldn't really tell who was drowning but I typed in the name of the sim that I thought it might have been. But it worked and suddenly everybody was out of the pool. Now I was hoping we might have some fun but the sims decided what they were going to do. Some of them went back into the pool I think. Others got food. Yeah there they are back in the pool. I had hoped we might be able to have some dancing or something but I was thinking that this party was a complete failure but eventually when they all went home most of them had you know awesome party moodlets floating above their heads you know you try so hard for the sims to get an awesome party moodlet and you make everything happen just exactly how you want it but the time everything goes wrong and nothing happens the way I had hoped or planned for and they all get an awesome party moodlet I don't know I think I should just be happy they got that moodlet but the party isn't over yet. Max has discovered the vacant DJ booth and set to work. DJing is playing his first track now. And he'll probably spend the rest of the party there having a great time just playing the music. Oh look, it's that day. Mary's turned into a zombie. This is a party that's got just about everything that I didn't want. But that's life, isn't it? Here comes Petunia. She looks like she's interested in listening to the music. And there's Barbara with her previous owner, Mary. And Mary's turned into a zombie. Looks like they're going to get something to eat from the buffet table. Well, at least that food's not going to get wasted if somebody eats it. Barbara's going to sit at the bar to eat her food. And I suppose Mary will as well. It's funny how the zombies change from zombie to normal mode whenever they're doing something a bit different. They obviously won't set up to do things like take food off the buffet or walk up and down stairs. If you watch they change into normal mode whenever they're doing that then straight back into zombie when they're doing something else. So that's Don there I think dancing with Petunia. Don's a flirty sim. He'll dance with anyone. He'll flirt with anyone. But he stays true to his wife, Olivia, who is the founder of this Perfect Genetics Challenge. Mary and Barbara have finished their meal. It looks like Petunia's decided she doesn't want to dance anymore. and She's heading off home with her awesome party thought bubble. Don's waiting and Barbara's having a bit of a think about poor Mary. 
Mary and Don and the bartender are just watching Max and it looks like Barbara's gone back into the pool. I thought she might have been going to do that. Mary seems to have enjoyed the party. Now she's spun into her everyday outfit. Looks like she's heading off home, had enough, but she did enjoy herself. It's a shame about the zombification. Watch how she walks down the steps. She's not a zombie while she does that. I think that's quite amusing. We'll watch her as she leaves the building. She'll wake up in the morning and she won't remember anything about being a zombie. She'll just remember having a wonderful time at the party. Well, let's hope so anyway. Back upstairs, the bartender has requested that Max play a different type of music. Max was happy to comply, and now it looks like the bartender's come out to dance as well. Don's just standing there watching. I think it's time Don went home. He needs to go back to Mountain Lake. I stopped in at Paul's place on the way home. Paul, of course, is Max's imaginary friend made real, and he is a bot fan, and I found him in bot form. Not only is he an imaginary friend, but he's a bot as well, and I decided I wanted you to see him in his normal human form. So after he lay down in the bed, have a bit of a rest, he's just having a nap, I asked him to change into his organic form, expecting to see Paul with his red hair and everything, but no, he got into his doll form instead. Dead. So we went backwards and forwards with him going from doll to bot to doll to bot to doll until eventually, after a moment of panic, I chose to change into his everyday outfit and there he was, the ball that I wanted to see. Then he had a catastrophe. There's all these things happening without my permission and now he's having a burglar. The burglar's still standing outside when the police arrive and Paul is the third one on the scene. He's had to get out of bed for all of this commotion. He's going to stand right out of the way to watch what's going on. And then the burglar and the policewoman go into the house. That'll be interesting. Paul moves from his hiding spot and stands and watches through the window as the policewoman and the burglar have a fight. Finally, the policewoman seems to have won, but the burglar isn't very happy about it. I suppose they had to go inside to fight because the lot is so small there was no room outside for them to have a fight. And then they go outside and the burglar has to stand beside the police car and wait for ages for the policewoman to report to Paul about what's gone on. She tells him that nothing was stolen but he's such a gorgeous looking guy and he's just new to town and she's just not going to let this opportunity pass without having quite a prolonged flirting session. It went on for hours so we're not going to watch all of it. If she did eventually head off in the police car with the burglar and Paul managed to get a little bit of sleep that night. He's not very happy. He's got a yellow plum bob at the moment. He's tired. He doesn't like being burgled, although he didn't lose anything. And he doesn't know who this police person is that wants to chat him up. But that's life. Fortunately, because his career is as a sculptor, he should be able to sleep in, not having to worry about getting to work on time in the morning. And that's why I wanted to show you his house. We don't want to look through the upstairs bits, above ground bits, just the basement because that's where he's got his sculpting equipment. He's going to come down now that he's escaped from the policewoman. He's going to start sculpting some ice. Now this basement is the biggest basement I could fit onto his lot and it's a very small basement so as you can tell there's not much room in it. He's obviously going to have to sell most of the sculptures that he makes. He's, there's a chair there that he just sculpted a while ago in wood. This ice sculpture will melt so he'll have to sell that. He won't be able to keep it. Nearby, just down the street a little way, is Patricia's house. It's that square one there on the corner. This house is a little bit different from all of the others you've seen and she's got a basement so I'd like to show you through it. It's going to be quick. Patricia's been out fishing at the local beach and she's heading home right now. We'll catch up with her when she gets home. This house is on a larger lot than the others. And there she is, she's got home. And now we will just have a quick look down from the top of the roof. So that's the top of the roof and she's got room on both sides, top and bottom of the screen. The width of the building from left to right is about the size of the lot but she's got, got space to park her car on the bottom side and she's got space for a path out to her letterbox on the top side. This is the top level with her bedroom, a small bathroom and her computer desk is in the spare bedroom. That's her car parking space. It's at the back of the house and the path is at the 
to the front of the house is up top of the screen and then the ground level is here with her TV room and a staircase down to the basement and on the left is the, the kitchen and dining area and there's a small bathroom tucked in behind the stairs and as you can see this basement is quite long compared to Paul's basement. She's in the alchemy career so she needed her alchemy station and I've given her an emergency shower as well. Don't think she'll really need that. But the other things that she's got side by side, every sim has received those items in their house. Sometimes there's been a bit of difficulty to fit them in but I have found a way to do it. There's an alchemy cabinet where she can store her elixirs that she makes as well as the potions that she made on the chemistry table while she was learning a logic skill. And there's a cupboard underneath where she can store metals and gems that she finds and I also usually add the various plants that she needs for the alchemy. And then next to it is the bug cabinet. And then there's three other items there which are all custom content. There is a backpack which is where I get them to store their seeds and a little esky or a cooler which is where I put their fish and the box that they're both sitting on is there for whatever she finds that I don't want to put elsewhere. Just a quick look at the TV room and the kitchen from her point of view. And that item in the kitchen is for her vegetables, the harvestables. Not everybody's got that because I couldn't fit that into their house. And that's it for Patricia's place. I think everybody's settled in quite well now and I think I have showed you quite a lot of the city but we will be back with more Sims as they move in. And here is Don happily back at the base camp working on his laptop. He's the only one there now and it's time for him to go back to Mountain Lake. He's got another household of Sims to train, age up and bring some of them here when they become young adults. He's settled in all of the young adults that he brought here this time and they're all happily living in their own homes. So it's time for him to book himself a ticket and travel home. So if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like. And if you haven't subscribed yet, then a subscribing would be very helpful to me, to the channel and to you if you want to make sure you see the next video. So there's Don booking his ticket home. And I will see you in the next episode. So bye bye for now and happy simming.